So on today's episode of Now What Do I Do, I need to figure out a way to address a problem that I have here in the lead up into York Station here. So as you see the, the tunnel that's coming through the wall over there, when it comes in, um, you, there's a turnout that allows you to go up here to the station on the right, right here, or to come down this continuous run track someday, right here. So when I set this up, I, one of the requirements that I had is that I wanted this, this passing siding right here to be able to allow you to run around four 40-foot cars. So that's how that is sized. And then that dictated everything else in terms of the turnout because I also needed enough space down here at this end to allow a locomotive you know, to, to make that runaround move. So you've got enough space here at the end for one locomotive. Four cars will fit within the runaround track and then you have to uh, turn out uh, just past the runaround track turnout to allow you to get to the station. Now let me zoom in over there and show you where the problem lies. Okay, so this turnout right here is the one that this lead, this track here, sends you up to the station. And the problem that I have is if you can, I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if I zoom in. Can you see? Can we see? Really hard to see it. I guess but the throw bar is literally right here it's behind uh, it's actually inside the tunnel portal if you will and to make matters worse um, not only is that inside the tunnel portal there's no room in there to get a tortoise underneath I even was looking at can I do it somehow with a remote tortoise mount but because the the throw bar sits just inside on the foam here and on the other side this is all empty because that's where I cut away the drywall when I made the opening so I'm really kinda screwed on how am I going to be able to put I don't think I mentioned this I want to be able to put some kind of motorized uh, control on this and just put a switch both here on this side as well is in York Yard on the other side of the wall so that uh, from either side you can set the turnout if you're a passenger train to come up to the station or come out of the station. So while trying to figure out what I was going to do, one thing I did figure out and I, I did a little bit of excavating, particularly right here. Um, let me get this out of the way. Maybe you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So, pardon the movement. So right in here, uh, there is a little bit of room. And I had this idea, well, I could probably take one of these micro servers, servos, here and I can actually get that to fit down in here um, I'm not gonna show you, but it, it will fit down in right in there I dug it out enough to be able to get it so it, it'll when I get it just right it'll fit down in put the servo arm literally lines up almost perfectly with the throw bar get it at the right height and then um, now the question was how do I mount that so if I take you around to the other side of this wall. So here's the other side of that and the track comes out just past this uh, 2x4 and then comes across underneath the stairs and comes out into York Yard. So I started thinking about how can I mount the bracket. Unfortunately that 2x4 doesn't extend all the way to where the servo needs to, to mount because the servo basically is mounting in the space where the drywall used to be. So I said well maybe I could design a bracket and then 3D print that bracket. So that's what we're going to do. Now that I have an idea of how I can get that servo mounted in there, I need to create a bracket that will allow me to mount the servo into the bracket and mount the bracket to the stud that I have down there next to the track. So I went into FreeCAD to design something to print on the 3D printer. So the first thing I needed was a sketch uh, for the pocket. So this is where the servo, this inner dimension here, is. The servo fits uh, right down inside of there, so then I extrude that out, and you can see now I've got a, a pocket that the servo can drop down in. Next thing I wanted to do was add some tabs here on either side where the servo actually can be screwed down into the bracket. So I added those here on each side. In a moment I will add some uh, holes for that. The next thing I wanted to do was I need to have the, the bracket which will allow this, this bracket to be mounted to the stud or, or screwed to the stud. So I drew a plate that holds both the servo 
pocket, which is integral to the overall bracket, and then, then here we will mount it to the stud. So we'll extrude that out, so you can see here, looking at it from the top, let me get here. The stud will sit here, so we'll drive some screws in this way. We'll put some holes in in just a second. These, the track is up here with the turnout you know, going this way, so the, the throw bar is roughly right about here. Servo drops down in, we'll screw into these two tabs here, connect the servo arm, and we should be good to go. So then the next thing is to put the holes in. So here I've created the holes, and then I went ahead and chamfered them so that the screws that will mount it to the stud will sit flush, give a nice, a little bit cleaner installation. And then finally, we needed those holes here for to mount the servos, or the servo in. So now I've got the holes here that will allow the servo to screw down into this. So this is my uh, hole bracket that I'm going to print, and hopefully it will work. So let's go ahead and we will come up. We will select the whole body. We'll say File, Export. We will export this as Servo Bracket 2. Yes, we'll overwrite it. So now we will close this, open up, and we will now import this servo bracket 2 into the 3D printer. So here it is in the AnyCubic software. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and rotate this flat onto the bed, and then we will create the su automatic supports. Um, so there we have, and now let's take a look when we miss the slice. So this says it's going to take an hour, about an hour and a half to print this on the resin printer. So I will go set the resin printer up and we will send this job to it. And uh, when we have a printed bracket, we'll be back. Okay, the print is done. Let's take a look here. Some interesting things. This hole here uh, is perfect in terms of, you know, it's clear through. And on this side, nothing. No, no indication that a hole is supposed to be there. So I'm going to have to double check just to make sure there isn't a problem with the, the model that I see. These don't look like they went all the way through and clearly I did not uh, make them the right size. I don't know what I was thinking, but let's go ahead and separate this and let's take a look and see if the servo will actually fit in here. That's the big question. <clears throat> oh man! I don't know if that's because that wire, I did leave a little bit of space extra. I thought, ooh, ooh, ooh. There we go. Fantastic. Look at that. All right, so this hole, I don't know if you can see it, this hole is not in the right exact spot, so clearly I mismeasured that. Um, fortunately, I think that I only need really one hole, so I will just take and drill. You know, so you can drill with the servo in place I'll drill down and make a hole there and put one screw in and that'll be more than enough to hold it I'll have to drill these out <clears throat> and countersink them so I don't think it's going to be necessary to make another print the big question was did I get the dimensions right on the servo body so awesome all right I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of this support off and then I need to cure the bottom of it because I didn't really get any exposure and I want to make sure it's fully cured